Okay, I think I'm live. It may jitter for a minute, but hopefully, uh, hopefully the signal will be okay. So, hello everyone. Uh, just to introduce myself really quick, if this is the first time you're catching me live, my name is Kayla Cox. I've lost uh, 80 pounds uh, using intermittent fasting, uh, and I've kept it off. And so, uh, things to know, I do this channel, I do this live, and if you have questions, like if you are, uh, you know, just kind of new to it and you're maybe overwhelmed, uh, leave your question in the uh, chat and I will get to it in the order that I receive them. Uh, my husband is moderating comments, so thank you, Jay, for doing that. Um, and he'll be posting links to things I mentioned. Uh, I do a podcast. It's relatively new. I think we've got and those are like a deeper dive into certain topics. Um, I'm really more of a podcast listener than I am a YouTube watcher. But um, uh, so it's kind of funny that I started a YouTube channel a long time ago, but uh, I'm really enjoying the podcast. So um, let's see what else. Uh, the Facebook group, if you are not currently a part of that, that's a great group of encouraging people over there. There's no diet dogma allowed. That's the only thing. So uh, the only rule is just that don't go in there and criticize how other people are eating. You can eat however you want to eat. Uh, just let everybody else eat how they want to eat. <laughs> so um, uh, let's see what else. Uh, I wrote a book called The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting and also new as of today, I have started publishing courses. This is live. It's called the inter uh, the sorry. Intermittent Fasting for Weight Loss 101. Uh, and uh, so you can either purchase it as just the course or you can get a monthly subscription to that course and all the other courses that I'll be publishing uh, as time goes on. So today we are going to talk about overthinking. So I'll talk a little bit about overthinking, just kind of some uh, ways uh, in my weight loss journey, how that was really important to stop overthinking everything. And, um, and then uh, after I get done, to get done talking about that, then uh, I will go and answer questions uh, that you've posted in the chat. So thank you guys. I, I see a lot of people checking in uh, from various places across the world. So uh, very cool to have you here. So let's talk about overthinking. Um, so this is, it's so important. <laughs> and like, and I don't know that the work is ever really done on, on this issue with me, um, but with anybody really, I think we all have kind of a tendency, depending on what part of your life you're looking at, you, you may be overthinking things a lot. And um, uh, I am right now I'm reading a book called The Five Second Rule is by Mel Robbins. And I watched a TED talk uh, uh, of, of hers like um, several months ago, it was around uh, uh, Thanksgiving actually. And it really got me thinking about uh, this technique of, you know, just like basically don't give yourself time to overthink think things is the purpose of the book is, um, and it's backed up by a lot of neuroscience and stuff. But um, so, uh, but this book, well, as I'm reading it, first of all, I'm thinking, man, that's so, it, it applied. I didn't know, I didn't have a name for it when I was doing this kind of thing in weight loss, uh, but it, but it's a really good technique. So if you're having trouble with inaction, that might be a good book to read. Um, but what it really boils down to when, when you're, when you're overthinking, usually it's, you're getting afraid, right? And, um, David Schwartz said, action cures fear. So you have to act on your fears. Like usually if you're overthinking a thing, it's usually all fear-based. Like, um, for example, um, when I was picking my plan, try, trying to figure out like how to lose weight, right? I was just like constantly researching, 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 researching. Why? Because I was afraid. I was afraid that I wouldn't pick the right plan. I was afraid the plan that would screw up my hormones. I was afraid that I would, um, you know, uh, get the weight off, but then I would regain it. And so it just kept me from actually taking any kind of action, you know, um, and occasionally I would, I would do something. And then, uh, what usually would happen is I would start overthinking it. Like for example, in 2014, I was running it all, but I was uh, running three miles a day 
and I was, man, I was in this great habit. And then I started overthinking it. I started thinking, oh man, I, maybe that's unhealthy. I don't know. Like that's a lot of miles <laughs> to, to put on my body every day. And so I just, so I quit because I got worried. Um, and eventually I read a book called Born to Run, which totally blows that theory out of the water. Look up ultra marathoning. Um, if, if you're ever, if you're ever thinking like, oh man, I don't know if this is going to be too hard on my body. Go look at what, um, what the Tara Mara Indians do. Like they're running ridiculous amounts of miles. Like it blows us out of the water. <laughs> so, um, what well, even marathoners, it blows marathoners out of the water. So, um, so anyway, what it, and also this is related to a perfectionist mindset. You're trying to do everything perfectly, like you're afraid of screwing up, so you're trying to do everything perfectly. And perfectly is just an illusion. You're not going to get there. So you have to just accept that whatever you do is not going to be perfect. You're going to screw up. It won't be exactly perfect. There is no perfect, right? Like there's going to be like like with your weight loss plan, there's going to be some changes that will happen. I mean, by definition, you have to change something about your life right now. You, you can't sit there and change nothing because then nothing will change. Like your weight will not change unless you change something, which means it's going to be kind of painful. So, um, so let's see, uh, during the weight loss journey, oh my gosh, that's when you really have to watch the overthinking because even if your plan is like, no matter what's going on, you're going to be overthinking if you're like me. Cause like, okay, first of all, if you're not losing weight, you're going to start overthinking or maybe, uh, maybe you don't even give it a shot. Like you're just like, okay, I tried it for a week and you know, you have all these thoughts running through your head. Oh, well, you know, maybe I should try this or that or add this to it or add that to it. And then you end up quitting, uh, cause you're so stressed out. Uh, or, uh, if you're losing slower, then you may be thinking, oh man, what, you know, like, what am I doing wrong? What, you know, and you just basically need to stop. <laughs> you just need to stop overthinking it and just relax and do your plan. Like just act every day, like take some action every day and stop overthinking it. Um, uh, so, and during weight loss, you can overthink it if you have a really good week. <laughs> like if you have a week and you just drop, you know, five pounds, just wow, I had an excellent week, which I don't know that that ever happened to me. I think the most I lost in a week was maybe like four pounds, but, and that was a rare thing. But my point is what can happen is if you have a good week, it's like you start overthinking it. Well, what I do this week that was better than last week and whatever, what have I been doing wrong before? Or if you have a slowdown, well, what am I doing wrong now? And just don't overthink it. It just, you know, go at your pace and just keep doing your plan. Just focus on doing your plan. And over time, you'll get to where you're wanting to go. It, you just don't need to overthink it. Um, and certainly during that time, you're going to be overthinking it constantly. Like, am I doing the best plan? Could I be losing faster? You know, all these things are going to run through your head. And I would suggest just stick with your plan that is working, that you know you can stick to. Um, and even when you get to your goal weight, because <laughs> this will, I mean, this happened uh, to me and I think it happens to a lot of people. You get down there and then you start overthinking that. Well, is this really the right, you know, weight? Should I lose more weight? Should I, is it okay for me to be at this weight? And, and the main thing that you have to ask yourself is, are you comfortable there? Do you like how you feel right now? Do you, you know, do you want to maintain here? It's up to you. Like there, nobody else is really paying attention to you. And it's more about like, what you're going to feel good at and where you can be confident at. Uh, so, okay, let's see what else. Stop overthinking. Just in, so in 2014, I was doing a lot of overthinking, like lots of research, lots of research. And then, um, just really not at all <laughs> do, doing any kind of thing that makes actual progress. Just thinking a lot and researching a lot. In 2015, I finally started doing some stuff. But again, I would overthink it and I would just like quit and I would, you know, say, well, I got to make it harder and harder and harder. In 2016, I really stopped overthinking it. I just said, nope, this is my plan. I'm doing this plan for a year. And that's what I did. And I ended up losing um, the bulk of my weight that year. Um, and, and then so as I started to see my plan was working, that I was actually losing weight and I, and I could see that I had been overthinking it before. It helped me to get into this habit of just 
don't overthink it. When it comes to weight loss, I'm really good at that. It's like, I'm not going to overthink it. I never did anything. I always kept all the foods my family was eating. I kept eating those. There were times there where I was tempted like by keto and stuff because I'd hear about people losing really fast, but I knew I wouldn't stick with it. So I stopped um, even being tempted by it. Cause I was like, you know, no, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm totally not going to stick with that if I try it. So, um, so just don't overthink it. Um, and that goes the same way. Like, even if like, let's take it the other way. Let's say you're on keto right now and that's your jam and you're really enjoying it. Don't overthink that either. Just like stick with your plan, whatever you're enjoying. Um, and no, oh, and I would like overthink my step goals. <laughs> like I would just be like, I don't know. Once I, once I decided on six miles, I was like, oh, I don't know. Maybe this is really bad. So I'd look up things like how many miles is too many to walk per day? And then I would see people walking for much longer distances. And I thought, okay, this is ridiculous. I got to stop overthinking, uh, this. And so, um, one phrase that really helped me, and uh, this was in a Zig Ziglar book. I think the book was See You at the Top. I've read that one a couple of times now. Great book. Um, wait to worry. That was a phrase. And um, that really helped me to move through uh, my fears a lot of times because, for example, with intermittent fasting, one of my fears there was like, oh, what if I screw up my hormones? Like, that would be bad. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to wait to worry on that. So I'm going to practice intermittent fasting the way it's being successful for me. And I'm going to wait to worry about hormonal things until I actually see some sort of evidence that I'm, you know, messing up my hormones. So in other words, like I, you know, as long as I'm feeling really good, having high energy, I mean, I looked up, you know, different kind of warning signs if your hormones might be out of balance. And so I just stopped worrying about that stuff. Um, and let's see, what else did I worry? Uh, oh, and just about every bite of food, which, um, when I stopped counting calories, it really helped me to stop overthinking about food. Like, um, I always kept the same foods in my, my, like my eating plan, but there was a time there where I was counting calories and tracking my food and weighing and measuring my food. And I started to overthink everything, like every, every, you know, in my mouth, it, it was ridiculous. I started to really overthink it. When I stopped counting calories, I just started to say, I am not going to think about anything. I'm not going to think about carbs or fat or anything. I mean, I, like I do try to put like butter on my pancakes, things like that. But, um, I try not to eat, uh, things with only carbs as my one meal. <laughs> Cause that's like a recipe. Like I'm not gonna eat just a bowl full of white rice and nothing else because I will be starving the next day because it just, that's not enough to fill me up. Um, but I had a thought there and I kind of lost it. So don't ever, uh, like, don't over analyze every bite of food. You know, I would just, I started to enjoy food. I just started to say, you know what? It wasn't that long ago that we had no calories, how many carbs, how many grams of protein and all that stuff. We used to just eat. We used to just sit down and eat and we were doing pretty good. I mean, like there wasn't a whole big obesity crisis. So, um, so that's what I started doing. I started saying, well, I'm just going to wait to worry <laughs> on that. Like I'm just going to eat, uh, intuitively. I'm going to stop when I'm full. And then there you go. I ended up being fine. Um, let's see. And then uh, over analyzing, overthinking every single gain, every, like, you know, it, cause the scale goes up and down and up and down, no matter what you do, even if you're being perfect on your plan, you're going to have days where the next day it goes up. It's like, what happened? But don't overthink that because if you just um if you just say you know i'm gonna do my plan i'm gonna watch how the scale trends over like six to eight weeks you stop overthinking every single day every everything that you ate the day before that might have caused you know it's good i think like if you if you start to notice things like chinese food it's gonna put several pounds of water weight on you the next day it's good to know that just so that you can prepare yourself mentally for like okay I'm eating Chinese food tonight. So tomorrow the scale's going to go up, but that's okay. That kind of mindfulness I think is really good, but just the constant overthinking bad for you. Uh, let's see. 
uh, yeah, so I worried about the dangers of fasting, but eventually I said, hey, there's tons of people who do it, so I'm going to wait to worry until I start to notice, if I ever start to notice bad symptoms, I'll stop and do something else, which luckily I didn't have negative symptoms of any kind. I, I felt great. I felt better than I had in years. So uh, to me, that gave me a lot of peace. And basically what it comes down to um, is trusting your gut, learning how to trust your gut. And man, it, it's nice because once you start learning how to trust your gut in one area of life, then you start to be able to say, okay, well, you know, I started doing that. Like I've with intermittent fasting and with all the things I started to do, I started to get more and more confident, which then led to more confidence in other areas. Like, for example, uh, writing my book, I would not have been able to do that had I not learned how to just act. Like, you just can't sit there and think about it because you'll just be afraid and you'll never do it. But, okay, so those are my notes. So let's see what, what some questions are today. Let's see. Ah, oh, Honestell, PA. Hey, Mark. Nice to see you in here. Alita. Oh, from Nebraska. I love Nebraska. Um, Omaha. I would like to go back to Omaha and spend some more time there. Uh, we're full-time RVers, and uh, so, man, it's just, it is neat to, uh, to see this beautiful country we live in. Um, hey, Tony, and let's see, Daniel from England. It's good to see you in here, Daniel. Uh, hey, Linda. And Kim, you're in Nevada. And Daryl from Washington, Tennessee. Hey, Kim. Oh, uh, let's see. Miss Caramel uh, purchased your book this week, and I love it. Oh, good. Uh, just finishing up my first week, and I'm finding that I actually gained doing 16.8. Any tips? Okay. So, great question, and I'm I'm so glad that this one came up actually, because this is a really common thing that happens. Okay. You've only been doing it for week is not enough time to really tell you um, really what kind of results you're actually having because here's why weight fluctuates up and down and up and down even when you're just a nor like a normal weight like my husband is a skinny guy and his weight will fluctuate up and down by a lot um, so uh, like for example I like I've I've been weighing myself every day for the past like four years now and I've kept all of that information in a spreadsheet so um, the most my weight has ever like fluctuated from the low to the high weight uh, in a, just by single day weights uh, is eight pounds and the most it's ever changed overnight is uh, like 5.4 pounds and on average it's changing by a pound day to day and um, and within a given week it fluctuates by like three pounds okay so based on all that that's that's one thing okay your daily weights go up and down a lot this is why I like the seven day average and so the way you do that is you take uh, the previous seven days of weights and you add them up and you divide that number by seven and that gives you your seven day average now you have a new seven day average each day and there's a couple of apps that can help you with this a uh, happy scale app uh, for ios and libra i think it's called like libra weight management or something um on uh, android and i've got a weight uh tracking spreadsheet for free on my website if you want to get it um and so uh averaging your weight over time can really tell you more about how your plan is working or if it's working or if it's not um uh so that's the first thing because what i would say is really about six weeks of consistent effort um will show you really where your weight is headed um uh because because your weight does go up and down a lot um so watch how it tracks over say six weeks of time of doing your plan um because because really you kind of even have to get a baseline for what your weight does just on a normal basis like because uh, you're a woman and so hormonally woo, man it goes up and down a lot um although uh, men i've been really surprised at how much my husband's fluctuates too so um uh, and then the second part of that though but so what do you do if you find a 16-8 doesn't really help you lose weight. A lot of people um, find that a 16-8, that they will lose weight. Um, 
well, also, let's talk about where you may be in your, uh, in your weight, and you don't have to answer out loud, but I will just say, if you are currently in a normal BMI, expect the weight loss to be very, very slow, uh, like less than a pound a week, like mine was a third of a pound a week. Um, a pound a week is really good if you've got a good bit to lose, um, and that's, you know, a consistent pound a week. Um, but if you've done it and you really give it a fair shot and you're really not having, uh, results with a 16.8, you have a couple of options. The first one is if a 16.8 really works well for your life, like if you're saying like, man, I can't see making my fasting window any longer than that. Then the first thing I would say is if you are currently snacking, so in other words, maybe you open up your window and you eat a little something, and then you snack a lot, and then you eat again, and then you're done, then perhaps the better thing to do would be to not to allow yourself to eat meals during that time, but don't just snack. Um, a lot of people find that they kind of emotionally or just eat out of boredom, not because of hunger, um, when it comes to snacking. Uh, that was something that I was doing a lot. I did not, I had no clue, <laughs> really. Um, that so many times before before I discovered intermittent fasting, I always thought I'm I'm just eating because I'm hungry. But I was eating because I was bored or because I was stressed. As it turns out, um, so if though um, if a sixteen eight doesn't work and you could foresee that perhaps like an eighteen six would work for your life, try pushing out your window to that very very gradually. Don't make it hard on yourself. Again, this is about being very gradual and really consistent. So if you find that you can't be consistent, first work on your consistency and then push out your window. Um, most people find that by like an 18.6 though, they're losing. Um, some people say, well, I don't have any results until I get to a 24. Some people have said they don't get any results until they get to OMAD. Uh, it's about, you know, trial and error, error ah, trial and error, seeing what works for you. Hey, Joni. So I hope that helps, Miss Caramel. Uh, let's see. Hey, <laughs> hey, Steph. Uh, we got to have coffee together. I'm in um, Louisiana right now. Not to not to give away your <laughs> location, Stephanie. <laughs> Sorry, but uh, Steph says stuff. Steph says was one of my uh, early uh, intermittent fasting success story interviews, um, and we actually got to have coffee the other day, and it was awesome. I think we we stayed there talking for out like three hours probably. <laughs> Um, let's see, Beverly, uh, Shyarla. Hi, are you eating more than one meal a day now? And how is that going? Great question. Yeah. So I am currently maintaining uh, my weight and my goal right now is to keep my seven day average under, uh, 145. So, or like, so 140 to 145. That's what I'm shooting for. Um, and so it's been good. I, uh, in December, uh, that's really feels like the first month where I was like, you know, trying to be like, okay, I, I just been in OMAD. I was doing OMAD, you know, every day for a really long time. So I was just in that habit. And then we had Christmas. So there's a lot of other things going on and I would do, you know, I had a lot of off days anyway, just for making cookies and other holiday kind of things. So, uh, then I, but then I started to realize like, man, I really, <laughs> like, I really want to experiment with, with like lots of different uh, eating patterns while I'm while I'm maintaining, I really want to see how loosey goosey I can be. But I realized like I was a little bit intimidated um, by eating like let's put it this way. So because I wrote a book called <laughs> The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, how I lost uh, eighty pounds and kept it off, then I, in my mind it's like. Well, if my weight ever goes above 142, does that mean I'm a liar? <laughs> you know, like, because, you know, my goal is just to maintain between 140 and 145. So that was the first thing I kind of had to realize, like, that's ridiculous. You know, my definition of keeping it off is that you're within, a, you know, a close range of that number um, because your weight does fluctuate, as I mentioned before. Um, so uh, that was the first thing I kind of had to deal with. So lately, uh, within, like, so I would say this month, so January, I've been trying to be like more experimental on purpose and say, okay, I'm going to like sit down and have lunch today. <laughs> and like, it's so funny that 
I really don't enjoy lunch anymore. I mean, there there was like one time I made myself a grilled cheese, a uh, grilled pimento cheese sandwich, and it was good. Um, but otherwise, I just like to be productive during the day, and so it's like this chunk of time where I'm like, well, yeah, I can sit down and you know like make myself a sandwich, and it just takes like time out of my day. Um, so, but I am I am trying to be like you know, more loosey goosey. I've definitely had more like snacks at night. So, cause that's like my husband and I, like we love to, um, have popcorn, you know, after the kids are in bed, just kind of like, okay, we've been working all day. We've been busy time to like sit here. Um, and you know, maybe watch some, some, uh, psych or fringe or something and eat some popcorn. That's, uh, that is one thing I've been doing and it's been fine. So, I'm still maintaining, I, I can't remember right now uh, what my current uh, seven day average is because I, I do that once a week, but this uh, this past like week I've been like super focused on the uh, building the course, so um, I, I don't know, but uh, uh, yeah, so it's going really well basically. I, I love um, maintenance time because man, it's lots of freedom. Like I you know, it, it, there's a lot of really cool freedom that comes with that. And it seems like to me, at least it's so much easier to maintain, like, uh, than it is to lose, um, because you have that, that range and it's just, you know, it's just a more relaxed time. Um, I try to, it's kind of a balancing act cause I have this channel and I do these things that are related to weight loss. Um, but my, my goal is to really not have to focus on that. Like, in other words, I want maintenance to be as easy as possible and as like, and take up as little amount of brain power <laughs> as possible. I do continue to walk, uh, uh, walk my six miles though. Cause I feel all so good when I do that. And it just gives me clarity. It helps me to do my work. <laughs> uh, like as I'm walking, I get ideas for stuff. I, I plan out videos and, and, uh, things like that while I'm walking. So, uh, okay. So let's see, uh, Hey from Trinidad, uh, Cheery who's, uh, Hey Angela, Renee from, oh, and from Indiana. Nice. I've not been in Indiana yet. Uh, Hey for, Hey Debbie from Utah. Hey Patty, I'm glad you caught me live. Okay, Renee, but isn't that type of overthinking it when you've had a great week is a really, a really a, let's see, you've had a great week is a way of reflection so that you can keep on doing it. Well. Yeah, right. So that's true. Like there is a line, like you want to be aware of like, okay, I'm on the right track. But I think the, the difference between say like reflecting on your success versus overthinking it, the overthinking it is accompanied by fear and self doubt. When you're in that other place where you're just like reflecting on, Hey, this was a good week. Then you're, you're in a good place, a positive place. You're feeling good and confident. That would be how I'd, I'd define it. <laughs> uh, S beater man, any advice on life? Be patient and chase your dreams. <laughs> uh, let's see, Renee, how do you stop overthinking it uh, when you used to do that? So again, taking action, just whatever it is you're overthinking, take action. Like if you're sitting there thinking, oh gosh, I don't know how much I weigh and I really kind of wish I knew how much I weigh and just go get on the scale, face your fear and get over it <laughs> because like, then you'll know, you'll know, and then you can move forward or anything that you find that you're afraid of, like just move on it, do something. Don't talk yourself out of it. Just do it. Like what Mel Robbins says in her book is like, you count yourself down like five, four, three, two, one, and you act whatever, whatever the thing is that you're debating, you count it down and you act on it. You do the thing. Um, and so, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Patty, you're so funny. Uh, yeah, Daniel. Yeah. I, I, keto is one of those things and it's like every eating plan. I've been a dieter my entire life. So everything that comes along, there's always a hot thing. And I feel like keto is a pretty hot thing right now. Um, everything that comes along, there's usually a, a bad guy, right? In, in the nine, I think it was the nineties. Um, 
fat was the bad guy, right? So you could eat like whatever amount of sugar you wanted to, <laughs> but fat was the bad guy. Um, like you eat rice cakes and uh, just anyway. But, uh, you know, to me, anything where you have to cut out groups of food, I just think not going to work for me over my lifetime. It's just, you know, and I want to figure out that thing that will work for my lifetime, not for the here and now. Um, but yeah, I love carbs. <laughs> like I do. I love wine and bread and pasta, uh, so much. And also I posted this in our Facebook group, uh, the other day. Um, I feel like just sums up all my thoughts <laughs> on, on the whole food thing. It, it talked about how dangerous worrying about what you're eating is like truthfully if you just sit there and obsess and you're worried constantly about every bite you're putting in your mouth and all that um that's a lot more harmful than just eating the things that you like um and it pointed out how like the french who uh, have much uh better uh like control <laughs> of of their you know weight and their healthier um better health outcome outcomes and stuff and they eat uh, cream and uh, they eat lots of pasta and they drink wine <laughs> and they eat bread <laughs> and so it's just you know and cheese did I say cheese I love cheese so I might have said it twice but the point is uh, that psycho it was it was I can't no I can't remember now Jay you may be able to find it on the Facebook group if you go search um, Trina consistency had been my biggest issue plan hopping never got me anywhere now I've fit my plan in uh, writing and I'm holding firm. That's awesome. Writing down your plan. So, so important. If you're resistant to it, just do it anyway. <laughs> just like write it down on paper. There's, there's just something really powerful about writing it down on paper. For one thing, I think you think about it more as you're writing it down. And if you, I think you can really start to realize as you're writing it down, like, wait, this may not work for my life. Like you're, you're I think you're more honest with yourself. At least that's what happens to me. Hey, Ron, uh, Ron, sorry, Ron from Indiana. Let's see, Ron, uh, the weather here has been lousy for walking while it's snow and ice. That's why I started house walking because I didn't want to have to depend on the weather to be good to get my steps in. Um, and then that was just a personal choice for me, but I did like six miles in my house very consistently uh, for a long time. So if you're just like, man, I really want to get my steps in, but I really cannot get out there in the snow and ice. That's one option. Like just do them inside. I, I, I don't, I don't think you have to do steps in order to lose weight. That's, that's not why I do them. I, I don't think it really affects anything because I've talked to way too many people who have plenty of success doing no exercise at all. Um, but, um, I'll even walk in my RV. That's actually how I've been getting them in lately, pacing back and forth in my RV, which is 31 feet long from the very end of it to the, the hood. <laughs> so, um, it's a lot less space uh, than that when you factor in this bed and everything. So, um, but the point, the point is you can get them in or like marching in place. Uh, if you can't do that, cause my husband, he can't do what I do, which is like pace back and forth. He gets way too dizzy. So, um, uh, he will just march in place. Uh, and, uh, the other day I was even pacing back and forth in my RV and reading a book at the same time. I was pretty proud of myself for that, <laughs> but okay. Um, oh yeah, Kim, one of the things that stopped me from starting was worrying about loose skin. Seriously, totally me too. I was like, I don't know. Like what if I, what if I lose weight successfully and, and then I look worse, <laughs> you know, like really that it's like, you already made the leap in your mind. I'm going to get all this weight off. That's like, no, you know, no big deal. But the, that skin and I told my, the way I got over that fear and Kim, I don't know how you got over yours was I just told myself, you know, if I, if I get down to my goal weight and I've got all that loose skin, I still have options. I could a gain the weight back on purpose because I like my body better before, <laughs> or I could get surgery or I could just learn how to accept it, which is what I ended up doing. And I found, I mean, I have loose skin, but it is not what I thought I would look like. I mean, I, I'm really pleased with how it all turned out. Basically, I, I'm happy. Loose skin, stretch marks, all that good stuff. 
Um, and you bring up a good point though, Kim, which is, which are you really scared of? Success or failure? I used to think I was afraid of failure more than anything, but as of late, I've started to realize like success is really the thing that tends to hold me back, like that fear of success. Um, so, you know, that that's kind of been a revelation for me. Like, uh, the things that really scare me are like, oh, well, that might, <laughs> I might actually succeed at that, you know, like with weight loss. I think that was really, when I look back on it, I was like, man, that was something that really, the, the fear of losing the weight and then gaining it back too, which is still success, uh, fears, success-based fears. Um, let's see. Oh, and there's this thing called for, foreboding joy, uh, which I learned about a while back, like basically it's that thing that happens to you, uh, when you like start to succeed and then you're like waiting for the other shoe to drop it happens to me all the time, <laughs> but I'm trying to get, you know, notice it and ignore it. Uh, Nita, we need to be consistent with our plan and understand that results will vary as long as we're not consistently gaining them. Uh, when our goal is to lose, we should reevaluate, reevaluate and just our plan. You're right on, Nita. It's, it's so important. Consistency is the most important thing. Consistency. Just consistency over time. Just, yeah. Because the, the weight loss, like, just varies with time. It depends on your body type. It depends on your age. It depends on how consistent you're being. Uh, trust the plan. So true. Uh, Ron, how long does it take to get adapted to OMAD? It depends on type of person you are. Um, no, not, not the type of person you are, but it really, it varies from person to person. I personally went very, very slowly to OMAD. Like I learned about intermittent fasting end of 2014, started implementing it into my life with like eight hour fast. And then I push it out a little further, a little further, a little further. By the end of 2015, so like after a year of doing it, not consistently because <laughs> I kept quitting. Um, but eventually I, by that point I was like at a 16 hour fast. So 16, eight. Then, uh, in January, a as time went on, I started to realize like, man, I, I like longer fasts. I get more accomplished. And so, and I also thought, Hey, if I make my fasting window longer, I'll probably lose faster, which didn't happen. But, um, I pushed it out really slowly. And so then, by, so by, so in January, I was like at a 16, eight, maybe sometimes doing an 18, six. And then, uh, as I went on by April, um, I, by probably uh, the end of March, I was at a 24 and then, uh, the stomach virus went through our house and I was scared to death to eat. And I like had to force myself to eat supper. <laughs> I didn't get sick, but it was just like really nervous. Right. And so I had done that for a few days and I thought, Hey, this was, like, it, it simplified my day. And, um, uh, so then that's when I went to OMAD. I think I looked up like, can you just eat once a day? <laughs> like you don't need permission, but I needed, or I felt like I needed permission, but, um, that's what I did. So it took me quite a while to get to OMAD. So my point is it didn't take me long to adjust. Like I jumped four hours ahead and I had already been fasting for, you know, a year, like practicing that. And fasting is definitely a mental game, mostly. Um, so it didn't take me long at all. Now, for the person out there who's doing like eating five, six times a day, you know, because you're eating all the meals plus snacks, uh, it's probably going to be like if you try to jump from, from that to OMAD, I would say be prepared for at least one week, possibly two weeks of it really being like a an adjustment because you're going to feel hunger, especially that first day, probably for several days. You can do it. Okay. People have done it. I have seen some cases of people who just said, I'm doing it. And like, you're, they're just dead set. But here's why I caution people to try to do it the slow and steady way instead, because intermittent fasting is weird anyway. <laughs> like you're, you're doing things that are different from everyone around you. And if you do things that are too weird, too fast, it can seem really overwhelming 
and a lot harder than what it actually can be if you would just go slower with it and be more gradual with it. And another thing that happens is some people will think, well, hey, if they're having this kind of success with a 16.8, man, if I just jump to OMAD, I'll have much faster success. And again, that was not my experience. I lost about a pound a week, whether I was doing a 16.8, 18.6, 24, or OMAD. And actually, after I went to OMAD, I had a little bit of a plateau that happened, but I stuck with OMAD because I really liked how it simplified my life. So uh, hopefully that answers your question, Ron. If you have any other ones, let me know. Uh, <laughs> Daniel, yeah, when you first heard the term water weight, I thought it was literally just water you put, uh, the weight you put on by drinking too much water. Yeah, and um, that was something I actually learned a really long time ago. Um, I remember I was getting the, I had gained a lot of weight with my first child, and I was in the process of trying to lose the weight. And um, I remember that I went, we went to, I, I had been weighing, and then we went to a, a Chinese restaurant, and after we left the Chinese restaurant, man, my, I was just so thirsty. I kept just like chugging water. And the next morning, my weight was up like four pounds. I was like, what in the world just happened? But that was an eye opener because it showed me like, oh, wait, that wasn't like a true amount of weight that I gained, right? It was just like water weight. It just weight fluctuates. Um, Harriet, I'm so excited about intermittent fasting. Checking in from Winston Salem. All right, awesome. Uh, after uh, catching an interview, uh, you were doing of a man who had lost over 150 pounds. Great inspiration. That is awesome. Yeah, um, I'm assuming that was Jim. Probably Jim. Or, let's see. Now, now I'm, it could have been Joe. But uh, yeah, I'm glad uh, that you uh, caught that interview. I think those uh, success story interviews. Ooh, before I forget, if you would like to be uh, uh, interviewed, as an intermittent fasting success story, like you're in here, it's like, hey, I've lost the weight, you know, and you're just in here for motivation or whatnot. Um, email me at Kayla at six miles to supper .com. I would love to interview, interview you because people, I think, get a lot of encouragement by seeing how many different ways this can work in your life. Um, when I think back over all the interviews, like, man, alive, so many people do this so many different ways with so many little tweaks, uh, and it all works. So anyway, uh, let's see. So thanks for being here, Harriet. And oh, hi, uh, Deli from Sydney. PK Mama, hi Kayla, I'm listening to you on your way home from work. Oh, nice. I'm glad you didn't miss this live. Uh, Donna from Cold, Wisconsin. What's the name of your book? My book is The Laid Back, Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting. Um, so Patty, you asked what my fasting window was before transitioning to OMAD. I was at a 24. Uh, oh, hey, Jason from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, let's see. I've been eating, Nita says, I've been eating WFPB. I don't know <laughs> what that stands for. I'm sorry. Let's see. You're going to have to help me. Sorry. Sometimes on the live, I can't, I can't pull up what that might mean. Uh, let's see, for a three, uh, so for a three to more four months in, my, in intermittent fasting for a month now, my stomach stays big and bloated. What can I do to reduce the bloating? I've never had to deal with bloating. Um, if you're eating a lot of fiber, then I would suggest, you know, that's probably why you're feeling bloated. Um, you know, one, and this may not apply to you, but here's one thing. Um, I used to be like, always thinking about my stomach. I was like, I, because when I was losing weight, <laughs> I was like, the stomach <laughs> needs to lose weight. Like that was the main thing. I was like, I just need the stomach to be flatter. Right. Like I look pregnant and I probably did look pregnant actually, but, um, uh, actually I know I look pregnant cause I had people <laughs> be like, Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Never ever ask somebody that, by the way. Um, whole food plant based. Whole food plant. Oh, okay. Whole food. Whole food plant based. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I guess that's a lot of vegetables. So maybe that's why. But my point is, so for a while there, I was like constantly thinking, oh, am I bloated? Like, like, why is it that I'm losing weight but my stomach's still big? And I finally just said, the the stomach will will shrink on its own time. So I just kind of like stopped thinking about it. It was another one of those overthinking things, but, uh, but maybe with, uh, maybe too much fiber. I don't know. 
I, again, haven't had that problem. Uh, Gwen, just started three days ago, quit eating at 8.30 p.m. Next meal is at 3 p.m. the next day, and I eat a full dinner with dessert like yogurt with fruit. Lost uh, uh, 1.5 pounds so far. Scared away every day. Hope I'm doing it right. Gwen, I think you're doing just fine. Now, here's what I'll say about daily weighing. I, um, I love it. I found that when I just said, it's a habit, I'm just going to weigh every day. It helped, first of all, to realize, like, that's just something I'm committed to. It's like flossing my teeth. It's like, I don't want to get cavities, so I'm going to floss my teeth every night. I don't want to get back in that place that I was in 2015 where I was, like, thinking the scale was going to say 185, and it actually told me it was 222 pounds. It was like, that was a moment where I was like, I never want to be back here again. And daily weighing will prevent that. Because if I weigh every day and I just say, that's what I do. It's like I brush my teeth. It's like I floss my teeth. I also weigh. It becomes this thing. It's like not even a thing because you just get over that fear because like I just weigh every day. It's just what I do. Um, you also have to learn how to just emotionally detach from the scale and not let it rule your day, not let it ruin your mood, and just know that it moves in its own sweet time. Um, uh, the reason, and so to go further into that, if you weigh every day, then you can also get your seven day average. And I think that's really important because if you only weigh, let's say, once a week, one thing that can happen is that that anticipation builds up and it kind of drives you crazy all week. And you think, oh no, you know, what's going on? But if you just weigh a day, you really start to get a handle on how much weight fluctuates, which can be really helpful when you have, you know, like if you only weigh the once a week. And then let's say that first time it says a number. And then the next time it says, you know, a pound higher, right? And you think, I gained a pound. But if you had weighed every single day and just averaged those those weights out, you may have lost weight. And um, that's the power of averaging. Um, and I've found that averaging really tells the whole story, especially when I got down to um, like more of a normal BMI. There were times, if I hadn't been averaging my weight, I would have thought, oh, I'm really just plateaued right now. But in actuality, when you watched the seven-day average, it was moving down pretty consistently. So um, those are my thoughts. But, um, but, but don't be scared. Don't, like, and if there's something you're afraid of, conquer that fear. <laughs> so, hey, Michelle. Uh, Steph. All right. Hey, Kim. I think some people will come at IF thinking they have failed if they can't hit. Oh yeah, if you can't hit X number of hours right off the bat, it's like expecting to lift 200 pound weights first week in the gym. It takes time to get there. So true. So true. Fasting is a skill. It's like every day you're getting a, you're getting your reps in, right? Like I've been fasting since 2015, so that's like three years, pretty consistently, of fasting, and now it's like nothing. Like when I did my five day fast, it was like barely any effort but that was because I was so used to all the mental things that happen with fasting um so yeah uh yeah it's a skill uh Daniel how do you time your OMAD in relation to doing your six mile daily walk I don't I there are times where uh my steps like especially in the beginning okay in the beginning it would be like I would procrastinate all day on my steps. And then at midnight, I'm getting that 14,000th step. That's how bad it was. Um, and that happened way too often, which is why I started just saying, this is ridiculous. I'm going to have to like get them in earlier in the day. And, um, but the main thing was, and, uh, and I started walking inside. Um, so, uh, I don't ever care. Like I have no rule about that. Like, I don't care if I eat, or, uh, you know, and then go get all of my six miles in after supper. Or if I do a lot lately, I've been doing my six miles first thing in the morning. Uh, but there are times where, uh, I do them kind of throughout the day. Um, and then other times I do them in the evening. It really just depends. Um, Gia, what did you change to go from losing to maintaining? Okay. So Gia, what I've done basically is I just like, I've just been eating usually more often. So, um, 
instead of, so before when I'm losing, you know, I'm doing OMAD. So one meal a day and that's six days a week. And then on Sunday I would take my day off from fasting, just eat whatever I wanted. And, uh, then, uh, when I decided to maintain, I just started to say, okay, well, if I feel like lunch, I'll have lunch. If I feel like having a snack, after supper, I'll have a snack. So it's just more laid back. I still continue to walk the six miles. So hopefully that makes sense. There, there, there is some, uh, and I, I, I've researched it, but I don't really know enough to speak intelligently on it, but there's some theory, uh, out there that, you know, your body kind of hits the set point and you don't have to like try as hard to maintain your weight. Like when you're trying to lose, you have to be like, oh man, cause it's hard in the beginning to, to do it. Uh, but then when you're just trying to maintain your body, kind of tries to maintain home, like homeostasis or something. Again, I don't know. I haven't researched it well enough, but it seems like it's true just based on my experience. But Hey Gabriel, I'm glad you're in here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Daniel, I did over 14,000 steps today. Awesome. Personal best. Awesome. Personal bests are so powerful. Let me tell you, like, um, I did that every month in 2016. I said, okay, I'm going to get a personal best for steps every month. And eventually I had to quit because it was like starting to take up too much time. Cause I had this thing where like, I would think, well, I want to beat it by a lot. And so then it got to the point where it's like, okay, this is going to be like a lot of time that I'm going to have to spend beat my personal best. And I could tell that that would stop being a good thing and start being a bad thing. So I, I quit that. Um, Susan, Hey, from Texas. Hey, I was just in Texas. Beautiful state. Uh, love San Antonio. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, old Hagen. Uh, hello from North Dakota. Ah, very nice. Thanks. Uh, yeah. Uh, I see Kenan, you said you can't do keto. You're a, so you're high carb, low fat girl. Uh, most, mostly fruits and vegetables. See, isn't that interesting? So many people do so many different things and have great success. I just love that. I love that people share what they're, the way they eat and how they have success because my own personal theory is there's like a million different ways to successfully lose weight and keep it off. Uh, Michelle, I'm having a really hard time getting back into OMAD since the holidays. I just can't seem to get back to it, but I'm very sad because I've gained back nine pounds. Please help advice. Okay. So Michelle, a couple of things. First of all, why are you trying to go directly back to OMAD? That would be my first question. Unless you had been consistently fasting at a longer fasting window, um, then like work your way back up, like start back at the beginning. And I know that's hard to do. You may find that you can kind of progress on up. Uh, but maybe you didn't enjoy OMAD either. Like explore that with yourself. Think about how were you feeling on OMAD? Maybe, maybe you weren't feeling great. Like maybe it didn't work well with your life. Maybe it wasn't a good fit. It, it doesn't fit for every life. I was, uh, I love OMAD because like I work from home. First of all, that's the first part of it is like, I love being able to just be productive all day to somebody who's like in an office all day. It might not work that great. Um, so that's the first thing. Look at your plan and really say like, okay, how was I feeling? What were you eating? What are you restricting or not? See, like I don't restrict any foods when I'm doing OMAD. If you're restricting foods, but like right now you're not, but you're thinking, okay, well, I'm going to go back on OMAD. I'm never going to eat, you know, what sugar or carbs again. Like, maybe change that, um, make your plan easier until it's something you feel like you could get back on. So for like example, um, if right now you're not doing any fasting at all, then perhaps you could say, okay, I'm going to fast for eight hours. And yes, that means you can sleep through the fasting window. It's just about saying, I'm not going to eat for a certain amount of time. And then I'm going to push the window out gradually. Don't go too fast with it. Monitor your results, take it slow and don't panic. You know how to get the weight off. You just have to be patient. So hopefully that helps. Uh, and if you, uh, if you have comments, uh, or uh, like you want to add, uh, to it, 
feel free to, to comment back. Okay, Patty, thank you so much for the idea of keeping the seven day average. I have been doing that since December 9th and it's been eye opening. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you enjoy it, Patty. Man, it was like a game changer for me. And, and it's, and I try to tell as many people as I can about it, uh, because I feel like that is one thing that like, people just quit before they even get started because they think, oh, I gained weight. It's like, no, <laughs> you don't even have enough data yet to know, uh, you know, like what's actually going on. That was something, did I, did I talk about Jamie Masters? I can't remember if I did or not, but that was another thing about overthinking. Uh, I heard her say one time, like, basically, you don't have any data until you take action. So like what we tend to do or what I tended to do was I would sit there and then think about, you know, like, well, here's what might happen if I did this plan. And here's what might happen if I did this plan. You really, don't. it's all conjecture until you actually take that step and take some action. Then you can say, oh, well, I took this action and here's what happened. And then you have to go from there. So Jamie Masters, the eventual millionaire podcast. I really like it. Um, let's see. Hi, Turbo from Washington, D.C. And C. Kenyon from Birmingham. Man, there are so many people in here from different uh, places. Chihuahua, Liliana. Hey, Isab. Uh, oh, thank you for the kind words. Hey, Elizabeth from England. Uh, let's see. So Turbo, I have been on OMAD for two weeks. I have not lost a pound. What am I doing wrong? Again, two weeks, not long enough to really know. Average your weight for, uh, do your seven day average and stay really consistently on your plan for like six weeks, then look and see if you've actually lost weight or not. Um, you should be able to see a little bit of results by that time. Sometimes your body just takes a few weeks to kind of adjust and say, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. And then it gets in and starts helping you out. <laughs> uh, let's see, Darlene, if you march in place with your Fitbit register steps, it does for my husband. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, peaceful palm. It's like once you have no options, then then it helps. Uh, let's see. Uh, Harriet, do you make an effort to get lots of veggies in your meal on most days? Mm, lots kind of depends on your definition. I am trying to eat more vegetables, but I mean, I eat a lot of beans. That's a vegetable, right? I I don't know. I really don't know how that's classified. I think that's. I don't know. The point is, I try to eat uh, m as many as I can. I try to get apples, you know, in. <laughs> Lately, I've been uh, trying to eat more apples. Um, yeah, so, I, but I don't, I don't freak out over it. I'm just like, okay, well, you know, like if I start to know, it's like, man, we haven't had a vegetable in a while. It's like, okay, need to start buying more vegetables. But I don't, I try to not have that all or nothing mindset. Like, oh, you got to be perfect all the time or like beat myself up mentally because I, well, like, wow, you haven't had a lot of vegetables lately. Um, I just say, how am I feeling? How's everybody else feeling? Are we all pretty healthy and, and all that? Then like, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, let's see, Gia, uh, can I ask the people on the success stories about loose skin? Some of them have lost a lot of weight and they don't seem to have loose skin. They all look great. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things I kind of don't want to get too personal because I remember <laughs> I was kind of shocked that people would ask me about, do you have loose skin? Like, I don't know. Like nobody, like in real life, no one has ever been like, Hey, you lost 80 pounds. Do you have a bunch of loose skin? But on YouTube, <laughs> they ask. So, um, so that's why I don't right now. And I'm, and, uh, and it's fine. I, I open myself up to questions by doing this. I understand that, but, um, that's why I don't, because not everybody that I interview has a YouTube or, or really is all that. I mean, they're maybe kind of comfortable on camera, but I, I just don't want to make them uncomfortable. Um, but, uh, most of them have been really good about answering questions in the comment section after the video is posted. So, uh, Melissa, thank you for being here for us. I'm 48 and have been doing, oh, we're almost out of time. I uh, have been doing 18.6 for four months, uh, high, uh, fat, low carb, and have started to gain weight back. I feel like I need a big reset. Any advice? Okay. So again, I would say, uh, really look at your numbers. If, if you're, if you are weighing every day and keep 
of your seven day average, then, uh, and, and if your weight is actually tracking up over, I would say over like four weeks to six, four to six weeks, if, if it really is trending up, um, and not just plateauing because some people like get really freaked out. Like it's just kind of like this, you know, but I would say if it really truly is trending up, um, uh, then you could check a couple of things. One is, are you stress eating? Cause a six hour window, you can theoretically do some emotional eating, uh, kind of check with yourself. If you're snacking a lot, that might be a symptom that you are stressed or bored. Um, and then it, if you find that you're just eating, you know, when you're hungry and you're really not doing any of that, you could try a longer window, a longer fasting window. I never did high fat, low carb. Uh, so I say be patient. Don't, don't do drastic changes. Though. That's one thing I would say. Um, just kind of like make a little tweaks to your plan and test those. Don't do a major overhaul. Um, now, if you're feeling like, man, right now, I just want to have a, a shorter fast or something like that. Um, you said a big reset. Uh, usually people are like, oh, well, I want to eat more to kind of like reset things, which I never really did. I always just kind of waited out the plateau. So, okay. Well, you know what? We have been live for over an hour. Oh, Miss Caramel, you are in Georgia. I am from um, Alto, little town called Alto. Okay. So, oh, and thank you guys for, for letting me know. And it looks like I am going to, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, thank you, Jay, for moderating comments. Uh, thank you guys for all of your very, very sweet comments. And I'm sorry that I'm not going to get to all the questions. Uh, but, uh, if, uh, you, you know, want to get into the Facebook group. Um, uh, hey Pat, um, uh, uh, then, uh, you can ask your questions there too. I'm pretty active in there. Um, but there are a lot of people in there who are doing intermittent fasting and they've got a lot of, um, experience and they are super encouraging and helpful. Okay. So, uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, again, uh, check out the podcast, the Facebook group, the book, uh, the courses, if you need some extra guidance along the way. And thank you guys for joining me. It was a fun one. I didn't cry this time like I did last week. So, uh, I will see you guys later.